Organisms cope with changes outside them by closely regulating changes inside. Humans and many other organisms survive by making constant small internal changes around a set point. The process of maintaining this average steady state is known as homeostasis. Although homeostasis operates inside, in a strange way it also operates outside. Because over billions of years, it's as if most organisms have brought the outside inside. It seems to have happened this way. Life originated in the ancient shallow seas of Earth. This sea was friendly to the first molecules of life. And yet even slight changes in temperature or chemistry of the sea would have directly threatened more delicate molecules, breaking them apart. Finally, a bubble evolved to enclose them. Perhaps this was the beginning of the cell as the unit of life. This cell membrane is thought to be only two large molecules thick. Nevertheless, it created an exterior and an interior and made possible the control of the environment inside the cell. The constant passage of water Nutrients and wastes keep conditions inside steady. These mechanisms allow a simple, single-celled organism, like amoeba, to survive. Even as the temperature and chemistry of the water around it fluctuate. The situation is the same within organisms made up of many cells. Over the ages, the outside sea has been brought inside the organism. We see striking evidence when we look at the concentrations of some chemicals in ancient seawater. Now compare these to our own body fluid. And that of other complex organisms. A part of this inner sea bathes the exterior of every individual cell and is called extracellular fluid. It acts as a reservoir of water for the cell. It supplies nutrients and carries away wastes. Homeostasis begins here with the control of balance between extracellular fluid outside the cell and intracellular fluid within the cell. Together they comprise the sea within. More than half of the average body is made up of this sea. In turn, two-thirds of the sea is intracellular fluid, or ICF. The remaining one-third is extracellular fluid, or ECF, which can be further subdivided. One quarter of the ECF is blood plasma, the watery part of the blood. The remaining three quarters of the ECF is mostly lymph, a clear fluid which bathes the cells. Several important homeostatic mechanisms produce a steady exchange of water and chemicals which create a dynamic balance between these fluids. Water is by far the most important of our body chemicals. A baby is about 70 to 80 percent water. A female about 45 percent and a male about 60%. Because of this, the most important of all the mechanisms of homeostasis is osmosis, a natural behavior of water. When a cell membrane separates different volumes of water containing different concentrations of chemicals, 
there is more water on one side of the membrane and less on the other. Water naturally flows from more to less. Osmosis requires no energy, but unchecked, it may represent a danger to the cell. Osmosis is a special case of a more general principle of molecular movement, diffusion. Oxygen molecules diffuse naturally from high concentrations to low concentrations, thus supplying the cell with a vital chemical for metabolism. Metabolic reactions in the cells produce carbon dioxide gas, which diffuses naturally towards the lower concentrations of carbon dioxide outside the cell. Homeostasis requires careful control of these mechanical processes, osmosis and diffusion. Exocytosis is one method of counteracting osmosis. Mobile, flexible, single cells like amoeba use exocytosis by means of contractile vacuoles which swell inside the cell. Then discharge excess water outside the organism. The reverse process is endocytosis. It's often used to engulf nutrients. But most cells in complex animals cannot easily move about. Instead, these cells use a process known as active transport to maintain concentrations that would be depleted by osmosis and diffusion. Active transport also carries small amounts of chemicals that cannot move by diffusion. Potassium is one such example. We consume 200 to 300 milligrams per day and lose about the same amount. More on a stressful day. That's from one and a half to five percent of the body's supply. Active transport must move potassium from the ECF across the cell wall into the ICF where it's needed. This is accomplished by specialized proteins embedded in the cell membrane. These proteins require a fuel, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, a molecule carrying available energy, which the protein uses to pump a potassium ion into the cell. This is active transport. In contrast, sodium ions tend to build up within the cell and have to be removed. In the same way, a protein pump uses ATP energy to eject sodium ions from the cell. All cells depend for survival on a friendly sea around them. The principal survival technique of complex organisms, homeostasis, means carefully balancing and adjusting a sea within. Of course, extremes outside every organism threaten this inner sea. In the next program, we will look at how homeostatic mechanisms guard the inner sea from the great outdoors. Thank you.